When we've gone through experiences where we've been silenced or silent for years, or we felt isolated for years, or we felt like we are completely incapable of connecting, not that the opportunities haven't been there, but that we haven't felt safe connecting, we don't share, right? So this is why I was so proud of so many of you yesterday. And by the way, hit share on this, make it go viral because a lot of people need this message. There's 55 of you, 57 of you on right now. Everyone, if you are interested in doing so, and it does not violate your free will because as a cult leader, I would never want to do that. Hit share and pass it on. This is going to be good. So I love the illustration of the metamorphosis of a butterfly. When we are just walking along, trudging along. We are completely ignorant of the situations around us. Oh, there's a cute little bunny outside my window. It's so tiny, it must be a juvenile. Anyway, rabbit, squirrel, literally. Um, when we are completely ignorant of the situations around us, it's kind of like being a caterpillar. We're just eating the leaf in front of us. Eyes right there, just right there, right in front of us. Crawling down the stem, eating the next leaf, eating the next leaf, crawl down the stem, drop, fall on the next stem. We're doing perfectly fine as a caterpillar. We're living life as a caterpillar, but it is not a bird's eye view of anything. Your entire focus, your entire world is just survival. Just eat the next leaf. It's survival mode. And very often in the experience of abuse, we live for a very long time in survival mode. So it's like just the next right step. And sometimes it's not even the next right step, it's the next stay alive step. Survival mode is a good way to survive. So I'm not, I'm not knocking survival mode and if that's where you are or where you have recently been, I am not in any way shaming you. Survival mode is way better than not surviving, right? So I'm not condemning the caterpillar. But there comes a time when we begin to realize that things are not as they seem and there is more to life. There is more to the experience. There's a bigger picture than just the next leaf and the end of this stem. The world is bigger than that and there is something greater to be experienced than being just a caterpillar. And it's scary and it's exciting and it's thrilling, but you cannot experience that world as a caterpillar. You can't function in the butterfly world as a caterpillar. And so as a result of that, we want to hide away. Are you tracking with me? We want to go and hide. So we pull away because we don't know and we cannot function in the butterfly world. We become aware of just the tip of realizing that we were created for so much more than just surviving to the next leap ahead of us. But before we can do that, we have to go hide. And for a while, we get this hard shell and we put up these walls that are barriers between us and the world. And behind that wall, we literally, literally become liquid goo. The caterpillar inside the chrysalis becomes liquefied. It's kind of shocking. Just how on earth do you liquefy from one creature and then reform into an entirely different creature, something beautiful like a butterfly from a caterpillar? Only the creative power of God can follow us through that process. And it's the same thing as for, for us as it is for the caterpillar to the butterfly. The creative process, the creative power of God is the only thing that can bring us through that process. A butterfly out of a cocoon that is filled with God's healing. But in the middle of that, in between those two experiences, while we are behind the hard shell, hidden away, we are literally deconstructed from caterpillar into liquefied goo. 
into this melting down and it feels dark and it feels isolated and it feels lonely as though you may never see the sun again and the only thing available to you is to stay goo behind hard shell walls. But this is not a permanent stage. It does not have to be your permanent reality. It is only permanent if you choose to stop growing and to stop living while you are behind the walls of the chrysalis. That is, if you choose to quit inside the chrysalis, that is the only way that it becomes your permanent stage. But if we stay with the process, if we stick with the journey, if we continue with a growth mindset, seeking wholeness, seeking healing, seeking reconstruction and rebuilding after everything has turned to goo, then the wings begin to form and the thorax and the abdomen and, and the antenna, the radar that gives you direction and tells you of danger, the radar begins to form. They're for sensing and experiencing things we could not have been aware of as a caterpillar. And then there is the struggle to emerge from the cocoon. And emerging from the cocoon takes time. And here's a warning. If you end up having a helper or an activist who comes along and tries to just break the cocoon open, to help you out and you don't go through the cocoon shedding process yourself, then the necessary nutrition does not make its way all the way down, are they the capillaries of the wings? And you don't get the strength that you need from the struggle. Your strength in healing and becoming a butterfly that emerges from the cocoon, you gain that strength through the struggle. And that is so important for both helpers and survivors to understand. If we help in the wrong ways, we cripple permanently the butterfly that is trying to emerge. So in that concept, when the time, excuse me, when the time of goo is done, when the season of goo is gone, then we can become part of the world in a completely different dynamic. Now, in just, instead of just seeing the leaf and the stem, we can rise above and see the whole picture. We see the bird's eye view. We can choose where to land. Our antenna warns us. We have radar now. Are we still delicate? Yes. Are we still easily harmed? Yes. Are we invincible after emerging as a butterfly? Yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. We are not invincible just because we've gone through the darkness. Here comes my train right on time. Just because we've gone through the darkness and emerged from the chrysalis and are back living in the light and able to float high above the dangers that are on the ground doesn't mean we're untouchable. We're still sensitive. We're still delicate. We're still easily broken. But we can interact with the world from a completely different vantage point of freedom and independence and also strength. The thing is, we have to have experienced each of those stages in order to become a butterfly. No butterfly is just born. No butterfly hatches from egg straight to butterfly. Every person who has that ability to see things from a high point of view and in a complex level of the layers of interaction and every person who has that radar, who has the beauty and the delicacy and the gentleness and the intuition that comes with having experienced all of these things is a person who has lived in the goo, who has been in the chrysalis, who has been planted as a seed and buried under in the dark and then grown up to mix my metaphors badly. None of us were born that way in the beginning. It is only forged in the goo and then in the struggle to emerge from the chrysalis. That's how we get here. 
We tend to fear the process. We tend to fear the struggle as though the struggle and the process were the end game, but the struggle and the process are not the end game. And yes, probably the stage of being in the cocoon may be the hardest. Like when you're the caterpillar being harmed and abused, you don't know anything different oftentimes. In the stage of the cocoon and the stage of emerging, it's the hardest because the caterpillar is not actively fighting its environment. The butterfly in the process of emerging is the one actively fighting its environment. The caterpillar is unaware on so many levels. It's just living in survival. So when you go into the cocoon and it's like this, this withdrawal from the world and you're pulling away, it may actually feel good to pull away from the world at that point. It feels like you're creating safety for yourself. It's almost like a time of rest. You're just not engaging with the world. It, it may be rest like depression. It may be rest as in choosing to withdraw and focus on healing. Different stories are different. It can be some combination of both. But the hardest part on the creature itself is when the butterfly is formed and it has not yet struggled to emerge from the cocoon. So this is the hardest stage because you are wrestling against the forces that bind you, the outside world, to become a creature of freedom that can healthily and safely engage in that world on your own terms, a creature that is new, a creature that can fly, a creature that is free. So where are you at? Are you a caterpillar still? Are you hidden away inside the chrysalis, waiting? Are you in the process, the struggle of emerging? Are you a butterfly? Wherever you're at in this stage, it's fine. Just don't stop moving forward in the metamorphosis. Don't stay there. Keep going and keep encouraging others to move forward in their metamorphosis too. So hey, I started my morning being called as a cult leader. I'm going to finish this by encouraging each of you to move forward in your own metamorphosis. And to someone who just said, you'd like to be able to read it to your boys, I'm turning my notes in uh, into a blog post. So I will be posting that on my blog over the next few weeks. It'll go into the queue. I'll post about it on my page. I will link to this video in my blog and I hope all of you can, I don't know, share with me what, what is most blessed you share the video, pass it on. All right. Lovely cultists have a butterfly day. <laughs>